Hello and welcome to my final project presentation for real-time object detection with YOLO version 1. Real-time object detection is a crucial problem to solve when it comes to computer vision systems that needs to make decisions in a timely manner. So the goal here is to familiarize myself with object detection training and inference pipeline and how that is implemented in PyTorch framework. Starting off with the data set. YOLO used the Pascal Visual Object Classes dataset combining the 2007 and 2012. Uh, there is a pre-processing step is required to convert from the VOC format to the YOLO format. Uh, I have used the conversion script provided by the author and there is a GitHub link. Uh, the YOLO bounding box label starts off by a numerical class ID followed by the normalized uh, relative coordinates. It's important to note that the x, y coordinate here is the bounding box center. They have chose that uh, to allow the bounding box to be scalable uh, regardless of the image size. Let's take a closer look at the tensor structure. Uh, looking at the tensor from a 2D surface, it's basically a grid divided by the chosen grid size of uh, 7 by 7. Uh, if we look at the tensor depth, uh, each cell contains two bounding boxes followed, the, followed by uh, an object presence flag, then followed by the class probability. Uh, the bounding boxes here are relative uh, to the cell instead of the whole image. Uh, this means an encoding uh, step is required to encode the raw label into a tensor before training. Also, a decoding step is required while doing inference to decode the tensor back into the bounding box coordinate and getting the actual uh, class information for the object. YOLO has 24 convolutional layer and alternating one by one convolutional layer to reduce the feature space from preceding layer, then followed by two fully connected layer to produce the final tensor as shown previously. For my baseline, uh, I chose the tiny architecture of YOLO to implement due to time and resources. Uh, the tiny architecture is composed of nine convolutional layers followed by two fully connected layers uh, to produce the final tensor. Note here that I reduced the fully connected size from 4096 to 2048 to reduce the memory footprint. Uh, then my modified YOLO, which consists of six convolutional layers uh, with some modification to the kernel size activation and adding adaptive pooling layer before uh, the fully connected layer. Uh, I also reduced the fully connected size from the original 4096 down to 1920. The training of the original YOLO has been done with 135 epochs with convolutional layer pre-trained on ImageNet. Uh, they mentioned in the paper the pre-training took them a week to complete, which I don't have time nor resources to do so. Instead, I trained everything from scratch with uh, 200 epochs. Uh, the baseline, I used the fixed learning rate schedule. And in my modified uh, YOLO, I did two different experiments. One was two-step fixed learn, learning rate. Uh, and lastly, uh, I used one cycle uh, learning rate with cosine annealing. Uh, everything was trained with the same optimizer. Uh, which is SGD was momentum uh, and decay. Now let's take a look at the loss. As we can see, it's not an off the shelf uh, loss function. At first it may uh, look complicated, but once we break it down into parts, it will start to make uh, more sense. Uh, remember that tensor structure that I mentioned earlier, it actually maps nice, nicely with the loss. So the first part of the equation uh, is the coordinate loss, which is responsible for the bounding box loss. The second part of the equation is the object presence loss, which is responsible for whether the cell contains an object or not. Third and last part of the equation is the object classification loss, which is responsible for the class probabilities. Now we can clearly see how the loss is structured. Uh, moving on to image augmentation, 
the YOLO, the original YOLO used a color jitter, which randomly adjusts the brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue. It also does a random upscaling on the image for up to 20%. Uh, in my implementation, I used color jitter, then I used the random blur, random grayscale, random horizontal flip, random uh, vertical flip, uh, random uh, rotation jitter. The transformation highlighted in uh, yellow are custom transforms that I implemented myself. Uh, why uh, specifically for the last three transforms? they actually change the pixel location. So you cannot really use the uh, off-the-shelf PyTorch uh, transforms without taking care of transforming the bounding boxes as well. Yeah, uh, nothing is really free when it comes to object detection. Here's an overview of my Python implementation scripts and configuration. The ones highlighted in green are the uh, user-facing scripts where you can use for training, evaluation, and detection. Uh, I also provided a, tr a test transforms uh, script to easily visualize the effect of image augmentation uh, to help choose the appropriate augmentation for your own data set. Uh, the modules highlighted in blue are in basically internal modules and not intended to be, to be called directly. Let's dive into the results. Here is the training and validation loss uh, for the experiments for baseline model and my modified model. It's important to note that the one cycle learning schedule with cosine annealing has, has helped to train and converge faster compared to fixed and multi-step learning rate. Here is the comparison uh, of the mean average precision for all the models. Uh, clearly my latest model at 62.3 uh, MAP is better than uh, the YOLO tiny baseline model. Uh, and it's actually getting closer to the full uh, YOLO model with the exception being uh, super tiny. Uh, now visually uh, inspecting the detection, we can see that it provides a somewhat good localization and handles multi-object scenarios. Overall, I think uh, the results are good. What have I learned? First, understanding the YOLO paper with the existing implementation. To be, to be able to break it down into smaller parts and digest this step by step. Implementing object detection training inference pipeline in PyTorch, overall learning the fundamental for real-time object detection is valuable knowledge for my future work with regards to uh, real-time instance segmentation, which actually was my primary motive behind this work. Thank you.